as we continue to talk about celestial navigation, uh, let's talk about a couple things. One, the path that we see stars travel through the night and some more points of reference that are useful. So let's start talking about pole stars. Um, a pole star is a star whose position is very, very close to a celestial pole. So as you may recall, if this is the Earth's equator, if that is extended out into space, that's called the celestial equator. If this is the Earth's North Pole and South Pole, that gets extended out into space to the North Celestial Pole and the South Celestial Pole. As the Earth rotates or orbits, revolves on its own axis, what happens is there is a star that does not appear to move as the Earth moves. Because you're aware that most of the motion of stars that we see is not due to the motion of the stars. It's due to the motion of the Earth. Now, our polar pole star is something which is called Polaris. Polaris stands for the North Star, um, and it appears not to move through the course of a night. Now, this is a time-lapse photograph, and during this time-lapse photo, the stars, starlight kind of streams out, and you can see the patterns of motion, and I think these photos are absolutely stunning. But this little guy right here happens to be Polaris. Throughout the entire course of the night, Polaris moves a very, very small amount, but it doesn't really move. That means that Polaris always stays in the same spot in the sky. Because it stays in the same spot in the sky, historically by native peoples and sailors and, and uh, um, ancient folks, it was definitely used as a means of navigation. Now, the southern hemisphere does not have a good pole star. The closest one is called Sigma Octanus. Sigma Octanus is close to the pole, but they currently do not have a good pole star. This pole star does change with time. Currently, Polaris is our pole star, but many years back, it was another star called Vega. And so 10,000 years ago, we had a different pole star, and 10,000 years in the future, we probably will have another one again. So we're going to talk about apparent motion. Apparent motion is how the stars appear to move. Keeping in mind that, again, the Earth is the thing that is revolving and rotating, and this distant celestial sphere background of stars really looks like it is standing still. And it's the combination of the Earth's rotation that gives us the apparent motion of individual stars crossing the night sky every night. Now you need to know this word. The word is diurnal. Diurnal means daily motion. And daily motion of the stars rising in the east and moving west through the night. Stars follow a similar path that the sun does. Um, you've known since you were a small child that the sun rises in the east, sets in the west. Stars appear to do the same thing. So it's not something new that you have to learn. You just have to recall that they do have a similar pattern. And the reason for this similar pattern for the stars and the sun is because of the rotational motion of the Earth. Now, one of the other things that's a little bit interesting about this apparent motion is what you and I are going to see depends to a great extent where we are on planet Earth. We are observing th things from a rotating round ball. Um, and if you're located on the equator, you're going to see things with a slightly different view than if you are on the North Pole or where you and I are located in the mid latitudes of North America at about 45 degree latitude. So what we see in the sky will change depending upon where you're observing it from. If you happen to be standing on the equator, so if you were right here standing on the Earth's equator, whoops, I have to draw the little man on the Earth, not out on the celestial sphere, what you're going to see is this. You're going to see stars go straight above your head and straight down again. Um, a time-lapse photo of stars would look something like this. The stars would look like they're going straight up and straight down. So they'd look straight up and again straight down behind you. Very unique star patterns on the equator. 
if you happen to be standing at one of the poles, North Celestial Pole or South Celestial Pole, if you were happen to be standing right here, really cool view that you would get. It would be something like this because, because each individual star would appear to just orbit in its own circle around your head. So this particular photograph, take a look at it for a moment. Is that a picture from the northern or the southern hemisphere? Right, this is a southern hemisphere photo. The reason this is a southern hemisphere photo, there's no Polaris right there. And there would be if this was a time lapse taken in the northern hemisphere. Anyhow, on the poles, what you would see is stars orbiting in concentric circles, kind of like grooves on an old fashioned record. And that's the picture that you would see in a time lapse photo each night as you looked up into the sky. We, of course, live in the mid latitudes, mid part of the, of the continent. And the motion we see is much more complex because what it is, is a really a combo of the motions that we saw at the poles and at the equator. So if this is you and I standing at our 45 degree latitude, we're going to see stars rise in the east, set in the west, but they're going to move in an arced path. So they're going to come up and go in an arced path up and over. If you were on the poles, we'd see concentric circles like this. If we were on the equator, we would see stars go straight up and straight straight down on the other oh, behind us. But on the mid latitudes, they're going to move into an arc. Now, there is still the entire circular motion, but the challenge is the Earth is going to get in the way. So all of the celestial motion is still big circles, still big spheres, except for the fact that we don't see the bottom of it because it's going to be below Earth's horizon. So once more time, stars rise in the east, set in the west. And because we are at about 45 degrees latitude, this arced path is going to be about 45 degrees above the horizon. So don't look for the pole star to be directly above your head. Polaris is not going to be above your head. Polaris is going to be most of the time somewhere around 45 degrees above the horizon. And that is due to our latitude on the Earth. So one set of slides to kind of pull this all together. At the North Pole, you're going to see concentric circles like this. At the equator, straight up, straight down. Mid latitudes where we are, it's going to rise, go up in a weird 45 degree angle and back down again. And this angle again will change when you move from uh, northern Montana down to southern Florida. You are going to have a different angle. Okay, this is a time lapse photograph of a, uh, this is a block of apartments and someone set up a camera looking at stars straight above. So my question is, if you had to try and guess where on planet Earth this is, um, my question is, how do you see, does it look like this? Does it look like this? Or does it look like straight up and straight down? Now, to me, these look pretty darn straight. There's a little tiny bit of curvature. And just by looking at those stars, to me, this image looks like it's going to be pretty close to the equator. Um, you definitely do not see circular motion like we would see on the poles. And also, your common sense tells you nobody lives in the North Pole like that. Yeah, that's not typical living conditions in the North Pole. So um, where exactly is this? This is Wing Kaho City, and this is over Hong Kong. And Hong Kong is in southern China, not exactly on the equator, but there is a little bit of curvature, not as much as you would get up here at the 45 degrees latitude. So you can tell just by this pattern of the stars where you actually are on planet Earth. All right, that will end this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye.